it sounds like and visually looks like you're enjoying it quite quite a lot i mean it's it's great i've kind of i started streaming God, i don't even know now um 2019 end of the end of 2019 kind of just near the end of the season of f3 i started streaming um and yeah just from there it's kind of grown and i get 400 500 people watch my stream now which is just it's still mental to be honest and it, it's it's still growing and we've got a really nice community going on i'm sure a few of them will be be watching this and yeah it's just really nice to be honest uh, you, i can kind of chat to them whatever even vent my anger with racing or whatever to them and they all listen and support me which is nice um and yeah, just to play games with my friends. Um, also, you do earn money from it as well, which is a benefit for me at the moment. Obviously not racing and earning money myself. So yeah, it's just a lot of positives have come from it from me. I've built an audience and that also will help me in my racing career, having a big following or whatever. It's something else I can use going towards manufacturers and stuff. So just all around positive from the streaming side of things. And I think it is the future for a lot of drivers. Obviously, Lando's been doing it, which I think is a great move from him because it makes him a lot more accessible compared to a lot of the other F1 drivers. So, And I do yeah. think you'll see as these younger generations come through and start racing and getting gaining a following, they'll start streaming as well. So it's definitely the future for sure. It's definitely getting bigger, isn't it? I mean, gaming and streaming has been around for a while, but I wouldn't say that from a sporting point of view that... There's not many like sports that get involved in it, really, is there? You don't see like Premier League footballers doing it, cricketers, rugby players, but motorsport can actually has a quite a niche with, with this, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, especially now that F1's getting, I think Drive Survives helped, and there's a lot of this sort of like online fan base now, Twitch. Yeah, it's a lot younger fan base as well, which is good for the sport as well. I mean, so, like yeah. F1 TikTok's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So it's nuts. Nice. Nice. I mean, you See, actually, we're going to, I remember having a look not that long ago just because I was interested from, like, yeah, just an interest point of view, Lando's engagement on his social media. Um, and he's, like, I think he's pretty much the most known F1. And this is including this is including Hamilton. And most of that will obviously come from his personality that people think they can, you know, have access to through his mm. Twitch chat. Yeah, I think Lando's really nailed it, to be honest, on the social media side of things. And he's gained a huge following, if or even how little he's been in F1. So, yeah the power of it is yeah. is immense and i think it's only going to get bigger from here on out yeah well i think it works it's i think it gives it's it's beneficial to both parties really because people want to see what people get up to behind their spare time yeah. behind the scenes they want to see you know how they chat with their friends how they laugh what they eat um and you know they can see you watch you having a laugh with your friends who a lot of the time over racing drivers as well which they watched on sky or whatever and that's a big thing. And for you, you get a, an audience that, you know, encourages you and positive. It's free for you, I guess. I don't know. If I remember, maybe there's a membership to Twitch or whatever. I don't know. But no, it's free um, to stream. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you get to fill your spare time as well. It's been perfect for me, especially the year off from doing mm. the streaming. And yeah, it's gone awesome, to be honest. And I think, yeah, with the drivers, because they're not very accessible, because when you go to a racetrack, you never see the drivers anyway, because they're locked away in the paddock and you'll only ever see them on track with a helmet on so yeah i think it's one of the sports f1 where you don't really get to know the drivers very well to be honest you don't get a lot of access to them so i think the streaming side of things is is very good too i also, I also think we're not far from point in professional racing where the audience that you know guys like you and whoever can have online starts to be a selling point yeah I think so as well. I completely agree with that. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say I'm there yet, but I'm I honestly not too far away from it being an actual benefit to my racing career as well now. Yeah, I, I don't think you are, mate, to be fair. It's only going to get bigger. Yeah. So it's, it's going to snowball. It's not linear, is it? No, it's just, yeah, it's just getting bigger and bigger. Even each month now, I'm starting to notice growth with the viewership and stuff, which is, which is great. So, yeah. Mm. It's yeah. been a real, real good thing I've done, I think. Yeah, I've been doing a good job, mate. I think you should stick at it as well, see where it goes. And yeah, for sure. Before we wrap up, are there any plans for the rest of the year, really? And uh, we're getting ready for next year, or is it just uh, sort, sort of getting the head back in the game, getting ready for um, it? Yeah, so I think I'm in a lot, I'm in a good place mentally now. I think I am ready to kind of crack on 
need to start training again to be honest get back in shape <laughs> i'm not too i i'm like one of, i don't put on weight at all I, it's ridiculous i've done kind of what i wanted the last six months and i put on two kilos to what i was in season so oh, not too not too worried about that <laughs> it's, it's um yeah i don't know if that's a problem or not that i can't put weight on like that but i'll, I'll get back in shape and it's hard to say at the moment because it's in season, all the managers and stuff are busy with all yeah. that going on. So I think towards the end of the year, I have more of an idea of what I'm going to be doing. And I think for sure, towards the end of this year, I'll be back in a car, whatever it'll be, with a game plan and crack on from there. I'm kind of looking forward to it, to be honest. Yeah. No, as, as someone who took a year out as well, I think, I personally, for me, it was one of the best things I ever did in my career. I uh, I was back on the bike for the first time last weekend and, Honestly, felt faster than ever before, just because you. Yeah. I, I think you clear your head up, and you sort of that step back can really give you a, a lot of perspective about things. Yeah. So, to be honest, no, no, I think uh, it's not a bad thing. So, so yeah, no, good luck for uh, the rest of this year, and good luck for getting some sorted for twenty twenty two. We appreciate uh, that. Yeah, I completely agree with your point. To be honest, I mean, I've been racing every year since 2010 20, 2009 2009 what am i on about um <laughs> so it's been flat out for 10 or so years and it is nice to kind of clear your head and i think yeah. I've, I've definitely become a lot better person from it and i think i appreciate what i was doing a lot more exactly. than i did yeah. before because oh, when you're in the moment you think this is just so normal when yeah it's not normal racing f3 around all these cool tracks with your mates because yeah. i know yeah. a lot of them anyway so I'm, I've, it's made me a lot more hungry appreci- mm. and I really appreciate what I was doing before now so I think when I get back on track it'll be a whole different story 